This lesson is for part one of section 9.1. Uh, today we're going to be looking at our addition formulas. We're specifically going to be using the cosine and sine addition formulas uh, to simplify some expressions. Now, um, just to start off, we know that the distributive property does not always hold true for functions. So even though a times b plus c is equal to ab plus ac, for functions, f of a plus b does not always equal f of a plus f of b. It usually does not hold true. And the same thing goes for our cosine and sine function. Um, we did derive these formulas already. Um, we also did the tangent formulas, but today we're going to just focus on sine and cosine. So make sure that you've already seen in your prove-it notes parts 4 and 5. Um, it's very important that you understand where these formulas are coming from. So now that you've proven these formulas, um, in order for you to be able to apply these formulas, you need to know them quickly. You don't want to derive the formula every single time, obvious, obviously. So you do want to memorize these formulas. Now to help you remember these formulas, I have a very silly mnemonic um, that is actually posted on the website too. So it's that video of the teachers kind of singing along this little chant for sine and cosine. So uh, it goes like this. When you're looking at the sine function, um, you're going to chant sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Pretty easy, right? Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Now for the cosine, the next line in the chant, um, you're going to clap to signify a sine change. Okay, so um, it literally sounds like this. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And it's very silly. So sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And uh, you can do a congo with it too. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Um, <laughs> okay, so anyways, moving on. That's one mnemonic. Now, I also do something else with that just to help you visualize this. <clears throat> if you look at a circle, let's say that this is some unit circle here, and I've got an angle alpha, an angle alpha minus beta, and alpha plus beta. Okay, that looks pretty bad, but okay. This might help you uh, in remembering that for the sine, you are going to, um, so sine of alpha plus beta, you want to add sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And that's because here you can see that if you want to get from alpha to alpha plus beta, the sine is larger. So you're going to want to add, you know, beta, I guess you can think of it that way. Um, now for uh, sine of alpha minus beta, this is where you're going to see smaller values, so we would subtract. Okay, so it's not really mathematical because it doesn't really work in any other quadrants, but um, it does give you a little bit of visual. Now, when you're looking at cosine, so if I looked at the cosine here of alpha, so that's like that length here. For the cosine of alpha, if I want to compare that to the cosine of alpha minus beta, this cosine of alpha minus beta is actually larger. Right, that segment here is larger than the one I drew in. I hate when I erase because it erases everything, but um, so here, this cosine here for alpha is smaller than the cosine here of alpha minus beta, which is why in that formula we add. When we look at cosine of alpha plus beta, here the cosine is, is not as long. Uh, that segment, I should say, is not as long. So the cosine of alpha plus beta is not quite as long as alpha, cosine of alpha, which is why we subtract. So I don't know, that might help you too. All right, so moving on, let's actually use these formulas now. Um, so I'm assuming that we're very comfortable with these formulas and that we can use these formulas um, to answer some questions. So for first example here, it says simplify the expression cosine of 2 theta times cosine of theta plus sine 2 theta sine theta. Now, you might even want to sing this in your head a little bit, but this is cosine, cosine, sine, sine, right? And this is a sine change right here. That's representing the cosine of alpha minus beta. That's what that uh, would be. Now, alpha is 2 theta, beta is, is uh, theta. So we're just going to simplify this by substituting 2 theta and theta in here. So we have cosine of 2 theta, cosine theta, plus sine 2 theta, sine theta is equivalent to the cosine of 2 theta minus theta. So again, I'm just using this formula right here. Where I see cosine, cosine, plus, sine, sine. Okay? So if I simplify, this is just going to simplify to cosine of theta. It's as simple as that. So it's just basically looking at something, um, recognizing which form that is. So this is cosine of s minus t. Okay? Now for the second one, where it asks us to simplify the cosine of theta minus pi, this is where we're going to apply the formula. So we're going to use cosine, cosine, sine, sine. 
Okay, so we have the cosine of theta times the cosine of pi. We're going to switch signs because that's what the clap means. And then we have sine of theta, sine of pi. So we simplify here. Now the cosine of theta I can't do anything with, but the cosine of pi, that's negative 1. So the cosine of pi here is negative 1. So I have cosine theta times negative 1 plus the sine of theta times the sine of pi. Now the sine of pi um, is going to be 0. So I end up canceling that term out completely, and I'm left with just negative cosine theta. So the cosine of pi minus, or I'm sorry, theta minus pi is equal to negative cosine theta using this addition formula. All right, next up, very similar, we've got a different uh, expression here, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So I see sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Now this is one of the sine formulas. Remember, the sine formula does not change here. So this originally would have been sine of theta minus 2 theta. So again, because I see that sine here, we don't change the sine for the sine formula. This would have been sine theta minus 2 theta. So this is just applying the addition rule for uh, sine. Now I end up uh, simplifying this and getting sine of negative theta. Now sine of negative theta is the same as the opposite of the sine of theta. So this is as simplified um, as that would get. So I'm just using the opposite angle identity right there. Okay. All right, now number four here, we're going to use our sine formula. For the sine formula, this is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So I start off with the sine of x times the cosine of pi over 2. We keep the same sine, and then we do the cosine of x times the sine of pi over 2. So again, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. All right, and then we'll simplify here. Now the sine of x, again, I can't do anything with that. I'm just going to leave that the same. But the cosine of pi over 2, if we're looking at pi over 2 here on the unit circle, well, the cosine is 0 there. So this term ends up dropping out completely. Then I have minus the cosine of x. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this ends up simplifying to negative cosine x. So the sine of x minus pi over 2 is negative cosine x. Okay, so the next type of question that you're going to see is uh, one where you're asked to evaluate the cosine of a specific angle measure, um, and it's not an angle measure that we have memorized already. So we see the cosine of 105 here. Now our addition formulas actually come in handy here because I can recognize 105 as the sum of 60 and 45. So I'm going to use um, angle measurements that I actually know. So like your, you know, 30, 60, 90s, 45, uh, any multiples of 45, any multiple of 30, this is what you're going to want to use to evaluate the cosine of 105. So you're going to change this from the cosine of 105 into the cosine of 60 plus 45. Now here I'm going to use the addition formula. So remember this is the cosine, cosine, sine, sine. This is the one with the sine change. So we have the cosine of 60 times the cosine of 45 minus the sine of 60 times the sine of 45. And now we'll just evaluate this. So the cosine of 60, this is your high point on your circle, which means that the, the x value there would be the smallest. So the cosine here is the smallest value of 1 half. Now the cosine of 45, that's right in the middle. That's your middle point. So that's going to be root 2 over 2, your middle value. Um, we're going to subtract now the sine of 60. So that's your high point, which means it has the highest sine value, which is going to be root 3 over 2. Um, the sine of 45 is right again in the middle, so we have root 2 over 2. Okay, now we just evaluate this. So we simplify here, and we end up with root 2 over 4 minus root 6 over 4. I can't really do anything with this other than to write this as one fraction, so I have uh, root 2 minus root 6 over 4, and that would be my final answer for the exact value of the cosine of 105. Now you can always double check your answer. Um, if you want to double check though, you have to make sure your, your calculator is in degrees, and then you would just verify that those two, um, you know, those two expressions are equivalent to each other. All right, in number six, you're going to be on your own, so please try this and check with a key. Remember, you're going to use the appropriate addition formula after you try to take 15 here and rewrite that number using some of our known trig values, okay, or the known trig angles. So go ahead, try that one, check with the key. Next up is problem seven, uh, which states that if the sine of s is equal to negative root two over five, where um, s, that angle lies in the third quadrant, and the sine of t is equal to two thirds, where t lies in the first quadrant, we want to find sine of s plus t. 
So clearly we're going to be using our addition formula here. So let's start off by writing what the sine of s plus t will be. Now this is sine, so we're going to use our sine formula, which is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So we have the sine of s times the cosine of t plus the uh, cosine of s times the sine of t. So again, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. I hope that I'm annoying you with these chants, but um, it does really work, so I even like to use them. All right, now, um, when you are evaluating this, it's really easy to make a substitution for sine of s and the sine of t because you already have these values, right? We already know what those two values are. We are missing, though, the cosine of t and the cosine of s. So right now, we need to find the cosine of s and the cosine of t. These are the two values we need to find. So we could do it a number of different ways. You can solve x squared plus y squared equals 1 um, and using, you know, sine is y, so sine of s equals y. Solve for your x, the cosine of s. Um, you could also use sine squared s uh, plus cosine squared s equals 1. That's valid too here. It's the same as exact way of basically doing this, this one here with the unit circle. Or you could use what I like to use, the uh, right triangle, just to help you get a visual too, because then you're thinking in terms of what quadrant it lies in too. So I'm going to draw angle S here, and across from angle S here, the opposite side is supposed to be root 2, and the hypotenuse is 5. So we're just using opposite over hypotenuse here. And then I'll solve for this adjacent side by using Pythagorean theorem. So I have root 2 squared plus uh, A squared, let's call it A, equals 5 squared. So solving for a, I end up with uh, two possibilities. It is a side length, though. Um, so when I solve here, let's see, I get 2 plus a squared equaling 25, so I take the square root of 23. Now, it is positive or negative, but I'm going to draw it in as a, a positive root 23, even though I know that since it's the cosine here, this cosine value is negative. So we know that the cosine of s is negative root 23 over 5. Be careful that you're not just using... Uh, this value here, root 23, that you have to remember you're using adjacent over hypotenuse. So make sure you're evaluating, again, adjacent side over hypotenuse, okay? So we end up with negative root 23 over 5, okay? And again, that's because it lies in the third quadrant here, where the cosine is negative. Okay, so let me erase here, and we'll use that substitution now. So we have the sine of s already, which is negative root 2 over 5. We're going to still find the cosine of t, so I'll leave that blank here. But we have the cosine of s, so that's negative root 23 over 5 times the sine of t, which is 2 thirds. So now let's work on finding uh, the cosine of t. So again, I draw in a little right triangle. It's in the first quadrant here, so here's t. The opposite side is 2, the hypotenuse is 3, so I'm going to use uh, right triangles again, or Pythagorean theorem. Solving here, let's make that b. Okay, I end up with b equaling positive or negative root 5. Now, again, it's a side length, so if I filled this in, it's root 5. So when I find uh, the cosine of t, this should be positive root 5 over 3, since this lies in the first quadrant, and my cosine here is positive. So then I'll substitute in root 5 over 3, and then evaluate here. Um, in the numerator, uh, in this first fraction, the product here is going to be negative root 10 over 15. In the second fraction here, I end up with negative root 20, or sorry, 46 over 15. Um, I cannot simplify these. I can write them though as one fraction, so I can write that as negative root. Oh shoot, I didn't multiply that right, did I? Root 23 times 2 is not root 46 because this is not underneath a radical. My bad. So that would just stay 2 root 23. Okay, that makes more sense. So we've got negative root 10 minus 2 root 23 all over 15. So this is uh, your answer for problem 7. So that's the sine of s plus t. Now in problem 8, it is very similar. The only change is that we are now finding the sine of s minus t here. So when we set this up, we have the sine of s minus t. Remember this one is sine, cosine, cosine, sine. So we take sine of s sine of t, oops, sorry, cosine of t, minus the cosine of s times the sine of t, okay? Um, and again, you're going to substitute in values that you know, so you already have the three-fifths here for the sine of s, you already have the sine of t, which is negative root 3 over 4, 
I'm going to leave you guys to do the rest of this question, which basically means you have to find the cosine of t and the cosine of s and make the appropriate substitutions in for here and here. All right, that is the end of the lesson. Uh, make sure you guys have, if you have any questions that you ask in the feedback form, and come to class prepared to uh, work. Nice job. See you tomorrow.